Hi, I'm Dr. Tanya Elliott, and today I'm going to walk you through how to conduct a musculoskeletal and extremity exam through video. So range of motion, gait analysis, and observation of bony deformities are the most straightforward aspects of the musculoskeletal examination that can be conducted. So let's start with joint range of motion of the neck. Again, just asking the patient to follow simple commands while you observe them is the best way to go about doing this. Asking them to look up, down, to their left, to their right. And it's easy for them to follow the commands if they watch you do it first. See one, do one, teach one. So, making a full circle one way, making a full circle the other way. So in addition to assessing whether or not there are any limitations in range of motion, the patient can also determine and let you know whether or not there's any pain. And you can then document that there is pain upon the respective movements. Now let's move on to range of motion to the shoulder, asking them to lift up their shoulders up and down, brush their hair on both sides, reach back to the upper portion of their back on both sides. Roll the shoulders back, roll the shoulders forward. And now you're able to assess range of motion of the shoulder or concern for any rotator cuff malfunction. Moving on to the wrists, making them make full circles with their wrists in both directions. Having them show you their joints to evaluate for any bony deformities. Make sure the lighting is ideal for you to be able to see this on both sides. Then also for evaluation of wrists and hands, you can do the Phelan maneuver as well as a tinnel test. And I'll show you. Ask the patients to keep their hands perpendicular like so for 30 to 60 seconds. Upon completion of that, the patient should be able to tell you whether or not there's any pain, tingling, or numbness, and then show you where that distribution of pain is located. For the tunnel sign, I ask patients to hold their arm, their wrist in place, usually on a hard surface, just leaning on a hard surface, perpendicular to that surface, and then with the opposite hand, tapping. And again, by showing them their landmarks, here's a straight line through the middle of the wrist, and we're going to go just lateral to that, tapping for 30 seconds. And if there's any tingling, numbness, or discomfort, you can document a positive tunnel test. You can also evaluate the extremities for resting tremor, asking them to hold their hands up for 30 seconds. You can also assess for intention tremor, asking them to reach for an object. So I will often tell them, why don't you go with your hands and reach towards the top of the camera with both hands. You can also direct them to do this as quickly or as slowly as you would like so that you can best determine whether or not the intention tremor is possible, is present. You can also ask them to touch their fingers with their thumb, evaluating for de dexterity. The beauty of a musculoskeletal exam is even when the patient is in the office with you, you're oftentimes walking them through commands and then observing them. So you can conduct that same type of assessment as long as the camera is positioned in the right place through video. You can also do a gait assessment, asking the patient to stand up, step approximately five to 10 feet away from the camera, and then walk towards you. Then have them turn around and then walk back the other way. And you can do a gait analysis that way, determine if they're limping, if they're favoring one side, and or if there's any, any extent of gait instability. Moving down to the knees, you can see whether or not there's joint diffusion present. You could also do that with the elbow joints as well. But remember, you wanna be able to actually see the elbow skin itself. Ask the patient also to palpate around and let you know if there's any areas of squishiness or swelling. If there is, have them hold their joint up to the camera, assess and evaluate for any redness or discomfort, and then have them show you whether or not there's any edema present. And again, moving the angle around, getting the lighting right, it all takes practice, but all perfectly doable. So again, doing something similar with the knees. The other thing you can also evaluate for is crepitus. Now you wanna make sure that the volume is turned up on the other side of the camera to the maximum volume. And when the patient bends their knees or other joints, listening for any signs of crepitus. 
hearing that noise, you can actually detect via the, the microphone. The last piece is evaluating the ankles. Again, seeing if there's full range of motion. If somebody has injured their ankle, looking for any areas of bruising, and then feeling upon the lateral and medial aspects of the ankle bones to determine whether or not there's any tenderness, and then asking them to stand up to evaluate whether or not they are weight bearing. From that, you can actually detect and assess the Ottawa ankle score. And from there, determine whether or not an x-ray is appropriate or if the patient should just rest, ice, compress, and elevate. There are a number of other aspects that are, can be more detailed and nuanced with musculoskeletal examination, and there's been literature published on this. But the amount of information that I've given you today should enable you to at least do an initial assessment for an acute issue. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.